Welcome to Food and Wine Pairing number one. This is the Tucma Torontes from Salta, Argentina, uh, paired with a wonderful shrimp scampi. Uh, this wine called Torontes, here's the label right here. Tucma Torrentes from Salta, Argentina. So this is uh, from Northern Argentina. And um, it comes from a region called Salta, which is probably the highest elevation in all of Argentina for wine growing. Um, the temperatures are the coolest. Um, and therefore, you it's very difficult to do big Malbecs, for instance. Uh, if if you do find Malbecs from Salta, they tend to be very bright and at acidity, almost like Pinot Noir. And this Torontes, also known as Malvasia in Europe, um, is very um, floral, uh, fragrant, almost like a Sauvignon Blanc uh, in terms of texture and acidity. But it has this very uh, Rhone-like uh, floral white flower quality that is so wonderful just to smell in the glass. Um, so one of the ideas that I had about um, um, doing this uh, tasting with you um, is that uh, when we uh, taste together, we analyze the wine like a sommelier would. And I thought you might really appreciate um, a couple of uh, new twists to this idea. Um, so the idea here is that uh, as you're checking the video out, um, you can hit pause or don't play the video at all. Um, but listen to what I'm saying. Uh, listen to me analyzing the wine. Hit pause. See what you smell. And also, I have this trusty uh, sommelier certification test. Um, that helps um, that helps identify the fruit flavors, um, the earth flavors, evidence of oak, and then structure assessment. We talk about dry to dessert wine uh, from low to high acidity, low to high alcohol, finish short, medium, long, etc. And uh, I want all of you to fill one of these out and you will be tested at the end. So let's talk about the nose of the Tucma Torontes. Torontes is one of those varietals that is very little known. Um, I think people um, in the past, if you tried a Torontes, maybe you have had one that's been had lots of residual sugar, or you've, you've found it to be sweet. Um, the ones that I love the most are salty, uh, briny, and that comes from the terroir, and um, are floral and dry, dry to bone dry. These wines are brilliant and are amazing for the money. So let's go ahead and give this wine a smell. Oh, it's so it's so beautiful. These wines, like like the Rhone whites, varietals Viognier, Roussan, Marsan, are just so attractive on the nose. the The floral quality to me smells like spring. It's really perfect for this season, and it really pulls me in the glass. I really want to um, smell it. Um, as much as I want to drink it, or maybe I want to drink it a little more, but definitely very uh, equal in terms of importance. So what are we getting on the nose? Let's start with fruit. I know we talked about flowers first and that being a, a main component, but let's, let's talk about the fruit aspect. So if we're looking at our sommelier tasting exam sheet, um, the first um, um, thing to think about with the fruit would be the first tier of apple pear. Secondly, stone fruit, that's apricot, peach, nectarine, etc. 
uh, citrus fruit, lemon, lime, grapefruit, orange, fill in the blank, and tropical fruit. That would be a lot of times um, it's, it's easy to smell, say, something like mango or guava or melon in, uh, in white wine. Um, so let's smell for apple pear, and then we'll move down the line, stone fruit, citrus, tropical. I would say um, it smells exotic to me, fruit-wise. It's not, it doesn't smell like apple to me. It, there's some pear, I think, happening in here. And sometimes I still get fooled on the difference between pear and um, tropical fruit. I'm not sure what's happening in my brain, but sometimes I think tropical fruit before I think pear, or I think pear before tropical fruit. So to me, I do get some pear aspect, and I get some tropical. I'm not getting a lot of stone fruit, personally. It's, um, besides pear, I'm definitely getting um, smells of big time tropical, uh, guava, um, mango, star fruit. Oh, just so gorgeous. Um, and, um, and then secondly, we'll go into the, uh, earthy aspects. Um, for me, this is very floral to me. It reminds me of the summer and, uh, specifically gardenia. I just love that gardenia smell. I don't really get any herbs or spices necessarily. Um, I get a lot of minerality in this wine. And to me, that's what really kind of pulls into shrimp, for instance, uh, any sort of shellfish or scallops um, really pair very well with this wine. I'm starting to get a little bit of banana in the fruit too, as the wine kind of opens up and uh, warms up. But that, that brine, um, the oceanic brine is uh, a really lovely component to this wine and really helps kind of tie in to the food that you're going to have with this. Let's talk about evidence of oak. So um, some of you might remember from some of our other uh, workshops together, evidence of oak shows up on the nose in terms of baking spices, most notably vanilla, but also cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, clove, those types of spices uh, really come out of the glass from the use of oak. Gosh, um, I'm not smelling any evidence of oak. I smell no baking spices. And in fact, this wine is 100% stainless steel aged, no oak aging whatsoever or fermentation. Um, I'm starting to get a little tangerine juice in the nose too as the wine opens up. Okay. Let's try the wine together already, Patrick. So moving to the structure assessment on your tasting exam sheet. I would say this wine is dry. Um, it finishes bone dry. The acidity is vibrant. I would say medium plus. It doesn't quite part the hair in a new way like some wines do. Um, it is a 17 vintage. So um, for me, this is the sweet spot of this wine. The 18 vintage is definitely part your hair down the middle acidity. This is a little softer, a little more approachable, but it's still like a very mouthwatering acidity. Um, the alcohol, this is something that we haven't really talked about in the workshops before, but the alcohol, um, you can actually taste or sense on the back of your throat. A wine that has over, you know, 14 and a half, 15 percent alcohol, 15 and a half percent alcohol um, will taste kind of hot, uh, almost like a whiskey is hot on the finish. And you get that right here on the back of your throat. Um, and for me, this uh, wine Finishes, uh, it, there's a lot of acidity, so it, um, it's still kind of mouth-watering, but I'm not tasting any sort of hotness with this wine. And we're, it's 13.5% alcohol. So there's, um, the alcohol is kind of kept in check. Um, you could, 
in this region, you could let the grapes hang longer and get more sugars. Sugars turn into alcohol. Um, but I think they did a great job with um, the acidity level and the balance of the fruit as well with that. So I'd call the acid medium plus and the alcohol, I'd call it uh, medium. Um, and uh, the finish for me is quite long. That's the, the, again, the balance between the acidity and the fruit. Um, it's finished lasts for a long time to me. Let's call it a medium plus finish. Okay, and then um, lastly, let's talk about the pairing. So um, I wanted to find uh, or, or come up with recipes that were easy to execute and for you to find the, the right ingredients um, at the grocery store because sometimes we can't, we can't find things now at the grocery store. Um, so I thought shrimp scampi would be pretty easy to find. You should be able to find shrimp at your local grocery store. And, you know, there's butter um, and garlic. It's really basic and some, some cilantro as a garnish, um, that, um, the, the brininess of the wine with that minerality of the, uh, of the shrimp, um, really is such a lovely pairing. When I tasted this food with this wine, I really got, um, um, a lot of the gorgeous fruit in this wine. It kind of takes away, for me, it took away some of the minerality in the wine, but really brought this fruit into, and the flowers into, into focus. I hope you find this helpful. Um, please let us know what you think uh, about the pairing and um, really hope you enjoy it and hope to see you soon. Cheers.